Good morning. A beautiful, sunny, but chilly morning today. Today we welcome as our guest minister uh, Ruth Gamble. And Ruth and her husband Fred are celebrating their 51st anniversary today. So I think that's worth... I'm going to introduce Ruth now. Um, we're honored to have Ruth with us today to share in worship. They have two children and five grandchildren aged 15 to 22 and enjoy their family to the fullest. Ruth has been with the Northumberland and River Phillip pastoral charge for six years and prior to this she worked for eight years with the Truro Presbytery. She's now officially retired but is graciously helping with pulpit supply in many of the area United Churches. And we welcome you here with us today, Ruth, with, uh, with heartfelt gratitude. I draw your attention uh, to the insert in the bulletin. Uh, please note that the church office will be closed uh, tomorrow uh, to mark uh, the Remembrance Day stat. Uh, Bethlehem Market's coming up next Saturday, and we are accepting donations of preserves, pickles, baked goods, decorations, and silent auction items. We also need some volunteers, and if you can uh, come and help set up on Friday uh, the 17th, that would be great. Please remember to check your Christmas cheer list and bring in the items this week uh, as indicated on that calendar. On Friday, uh, you can go to the uh, Christmas luncheon and craft sale at the First Baptist Church before you come over here to help set up for Bethlehem Market. The, <laughs> the cost is $7 per person. There is a Christmas tea and sale uh, on the 18th at Holy Family Parish, Baked Goods, Crafts, White Elephant, Raffles, and Complimentary Christmas Cider. So you can only go there after you come to the Bethlehem Market. You can tell we're a busy spot in downtown Amherst. Uh, the Baptist Church House Tour, Deck the Halls, is coming up in a couple of weeks on Saturday, December the 2nd. And you're directed as to where um, tickets can be purchased for that. The Port Greville Living Christmas Tree is will be coming back to town to First Baptist on Monday, December the 4th. And there is a craft and, and luncheon sale at uh, the First Baptist on December the 9th. So no need to go hungry in Amherst on the weekends between now and the new year. On the flip side, I just draw to your attention to the very busy, uh, active December we are going to have here at Trinity St. Stephen's. And uh, please uh, take that home with you and uh, refer to it so that you don't miss out on anything. In the dawn's cool glow, in the bright of day, in the evening's painted sky, and the nighttime's starry dark, the Christ light shines with God's love for us all.
we gather here from our separate places, we gather here from our separate lives, we come with expectations that our lives will be touched, changed, and with hope that our world will be blessed. We come with willing spirits, open for your word. Let's stand and sing in Voices United, sing praise to God who reigns above. <coughs> Let us join in the prayer of confession. Done with their summer's work, the trees get ready for their colorful display. Finished with raising fledglings, the geese soar overhead, celebrating the leftover fruits of the harvest. Help us, God, to celebrate all of our blessings. Many things cause us to stumble, Lord. We get impatient with ourselves. We search for ways to be more faithful. How can we live as better people? Our failures hurt us and others. Speak to us of your mercy and new hope. Help us find a moment of peace and to simply be. Help us to celebrate your presence, your mystery and your love. Amen. The assurance of pardon. 
The call of wisdom assures us that when we journey with God, we will find life in all its abundance. In good times and bad, we will not be alone, but be held in God's embrace, who loves us and holds us close to his heart. Amen. Now let us share the shalom and salam of Christ as we greet one another. Because we live in a world where many are at the limit of their strength, we bring these gifts to the building of a church that shares burdens and gladdens hearts. May it be so. We will receive our morning offering. Let us now hear the scriptures. The first one, Joshua chapter 24, verses uh, 1 to 3 and 14 to 25. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel together at Shechem. He called the elders, the leaders, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they came into the presence of God. Joshua said to the people, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, has to say. Long ago, your ancestors lived on the other side of the Euphrates River and worshipped other gods. One of those ancestors was Terah, the father of Abraham and Nahor. Then I took Abraham, your ancestor, from the land across the Euphrates and led him through the whole land of Canaan. I gave him many descendants. I gave him Isaac. Now then, Joshua continued, honor the Lord and serve him sincerely and faithfully. Get rid of the gods which your ancestors used to worship in Mesopotamia and in Egypt and serve only the Lord. If you are not willing to serve him, decide today whom you will serve, the gods your ancestors worshiped in Mesopotamia or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are now living. 
As for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. The people replied, We would never leave God to serve other gods. The Lord our God brought our fathers and us out of slavery in Egypt, and we saw the miracles that he performed. He kept us safe whenever we went among all the nations which we passed. As we advanced into this land, the Lord drove out the Amorites who lived here. So we also will serve the Lord. He is our God. Joshua said to the people, But you may not be able to serve the Lord. He is the holy God and will not forgive your sins. He will tolerate no rivals. And if you leave him to serve foreign gods, he will turn against you and punish you. He will destroy you even though he was good to you before. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Joshua told them, You are your own witnesses to the fact that you have chosen to serve the Lord. Yes, they said, we are witnesses. Then get rid of those foreign gods that you have, he demanded, and pledge your loyalty to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people then said to Joshua, We will serve the Lord our God. We will obey his commands. So Joshua made a covenant for the people that day, and there at Shechem he gave them laws and rules to follow. Please turn to Psalm 78 which is uh, page number 792 in Voices United. Give heed to my teaching, O my people. Turn your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth and bear I will give you the meaning of things in the past. What we have heard and known, what our parents have told us, we will not hide from their grandchildren. But declare to the next generation the testimony that you gave to Jacob and the law you appointed in Israel which you commanded them to teach their children. That the next generation might know them, children yet unborn, and that these in turn should arise and tell their children. That they should put their trust in you and not forget your great deeds, but keep all your commandments. Our next lesson is uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. And regarding the question, friends, that has come up about what happens to those already dead and buried, we don't want you in the dark any longer. First off, you must not carry on over them like people who have nothing to look forward to, as if the grave were the last word. Since Jesus died and broke loose from the grave, God will most certainly bring back to life those who died in Jesus. And then this, we can tell you with complete confidence, we have the Master's word on it, that when the Master comes again to get us, those of us who are still alive will not get a jump on the dead and leave them behind. In actual fact, they'll be ahead of us. The Master himself will give the command. Archangel thunder, God's trumpet blast, He'll come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise. They will go first. Then the rest of us who are still alive at the time will be caught up with them into the clouds to meet the Master. Oh, we will be walking on air. And then there will be one huge family reunion with the Master. So reassure one another with these words.
beautiful music to bring us together. Reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 1 to 13. The parable of the ten bridesmaids. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps, the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will be not enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. And we hear the Holy Spirit speaking to us this day. Sing, Spirit of God, be our breath. 150. <clears throat> Are we spiritually awake this day? Are you feeling prepared? And what on earth does that mean, you might ask? Wednesday morning, as I was getting ready to go to Port Creville for a presbytery meeting with the Parsboro Shore pastoral charge, I opened the curtains, and there were the cars covered in snow. We were not ready. We were not prepared for that first snow, I think. So I started the car and cleaned it off, and I headed out. And as I turned the corner at the Napan United Church to head down to Southampton, 
there was another spiritual awakening for me. The ground was totally covered and the trees were covered in glorious snow and it was beautiful. And I thought, perhaps we are ready to see this beauty in God this day. And as I drove down through Southampton and headed to Parsboro, there was again the difference of night and day. There was no snow. And so by the time I came home at 1.30, it was indeed all gone through Southampton. But it was a spiritual awakening indeed for me that this is the beauty of God in our midst. Are we ready? In these last chapters of the Gospel of Matthew, as Jesus draws closer to his death and, of course, his rising, he speaks at length about the end times. When are all of these things going to happen that you're telling us about? And how will we know? Will we be ready? Will we be awake? Both spiritually and practically? This parable of the wise and foolish maidens is unique to Matthew's Gospel and it offers a comparison that illuminates the manifestation of the Kingdom of Heaven, which is Matthew's preferred phrase. And today's text about the oil and the bridesmaids and the wedding ponders and pondering the end of times, we are reminded that the early Christians in Matthew's community, a generation or so after Jesus ascended to heaven, were still setting their sights and hopes on his quick return. And that first generation was of the belief that Jesus would return in their own time. But by the time the gospel was written, there had already been a delay. And today, some 2,000 years plus, there is still delays. And our questions might be just as pressing. What are we going to do and what does being ready look like for us as people of faith? When will things change and what are we going to do about the messy world that we live in? What will God ask of us? And what on earth will happen to that next generation that is going to follow us? They are our loved ones. And these are questions that we cannot answer, even today. And in this parable, for whatever reason, the groom does not show up on time and the hours pass by and many of the wedding party fall asleep. But finally they're awakened by a shout, he's coming, we better prepare. And so the bridesmaids leap into action, trim their lamps and go to meet him. But five of the ten have used up all of their oil and have no reserves. Their attempt to borrow is also rejected. And when they finally arrive at the home of the groom, they are locked out and dismissed. Keep awake, Jesus concludes. You do not know the day or the hour. This is a harsh parable this day. It's disturbing to us, perhaps. The fate of the foolish brides unsettles us, as does the seemingly heartlessness of the wise bridesmaids who refuse to share their oil. As we think back to other scriptures, we are reminded that Jesus often exaggerated to dramatize his message in many of the parables of our biblical stories. And that having been said, the bite of this message ought not to be obscured. In truth, life's opportunities can be squandered. Are we as congregations connected or tied to that closed door of this parable? Or do we live with gratitude of life for the endless opportunities that come through our open hearts and our open doors? Are the doors of Trinity St. Stephen's open to everyone? Do we sit in the same pew that we sit in week to week, and I suspect that we do. What is so difficult with moving a pew to being open to change? 
Often we feel that we have all the time in the world to look after the happenings of life, to mend that broken relationship, or to share a word of gratitude, or to give someone a call that we haven't chatted with in a long time. It might be spending quality time with a grandchild or a great-grandchild or a niece or a nephew. It's about achieving a new goal or changing careers, deepening our relationship with God, faithfully following Christ. Endless opportunities that we often miss out on. For we put off what we might do today until tomorrow, and often it's too late for us. Just as the bridesmaids were too late. The door was closed, an opportunity lost, time mislaid. And why do we put things off? Are we impatient with ourselves or with others? Do our minds get lost in what turns out to be those simple delays of life? Perhaps we're on hold, waiting to speak to someone who is alive, and after a few minutes we hang up. We're impatient as we leave five minutes late to go to a destination, and then we drive like crazy to get there. We're very impatient with ourselves. Perhaps we have a sluggish internet connection or a spot with no connection, and there's lots of those around here. Perhaps you're waiting for your doctor's appointment and you're flipping through your phone or you're texting, paying absolutely no attention to what is happening around you, to the beauty of the smile of that person that might be sitting across from you, or that person who needs a smile in return. Delays frustrate those of us who live in a fast-paced world. And in that light, many of us also need instant satisfaction in response to an email that we sent five minutes ago. I know we all do that. We're texting and we're looking and we're waiting for a response and we're missing what's going on around us. Perhaps we're impatient in searching for new ministry personnel for Trinity St. Stephen's United Church for our patience is not what it used to be for many of us. What is the delay, you are asking? It's a hard piece of work that your search team is doing. And just like so many things in life, the gift is in the timing. What is your faith and your relationship with Jesus Christ like this very moment, this very day? Are you wavering? Or are you trusting that no matter what, the bridegroom will be always with you? and that the love of God will continue to appear in our lives in surprising and unexpected ways. I invite you to ponder these thoughts for a moment. Jesus Christ is in our midst when we live with hope and never give up. Jesus Christ comes when the veterans were provided with a new Vimy oak tree rededicated yesterday after the senseless loss of that first tree planted. Jesus Christ is in our midst when we as faithful, faithful people of the body of Christ express our love and compassion for social justice. Perhaps you attended the first Amherst Pride Parade. Perhaps we missed the opportunity to put a float in, for I think the only church represented was Christ Church. Next year, let's be ready, let's be prepared. And we know that you all support the local food bank and the boxes for Christmas cheer and so many other needs of our community. Look broad and wide and see what's happening in our communities outside of the walls of our church. Jesus Christ is in our midst 
when those near death are safe in God's love. Jesus Christ is in your midst through the gift of music that lives within this Trinity St. Stephen's United Church choir and congregation and in the wider world. God is in your midst as you give thanks for the gift of the worship team who are keeping your weekly services consistent and faithful. And God is in the midst of the search committee as they work diligently on your behalf. Trust them. Be patient with them. And I can only speak to that because I'm a presbytery representative on the search committee, Marlene and I. And so we've been journeying with these folks. Jesus Christ lives in us as we share our hope and our love, giving ourselves to this kingdom that we live in here on earth this very moment, this week. For we are the light of Christ, and we are called to be faithful. And when we leave our church service on Sunday, we take that light with us, and we continue to be the body of Christ in our communities. Now is that time for active living as this body of Christ. The kingdom of heaven calls us to new life, improved commitment, casting away false idols, active waiting in hope, and renewed vigor in our faith, in our relationship with Jesus. I invite you to continue to gather with each other and to stick with each other, to look after each other and to live it, to believe in Jesus Christ. One of the secrets of this gospel today is that faithful action done right now prepares us to weather the unexpected timing of God, even as it prepares us for a heavenly wedding celebration when Jesus and his people the bridegroom and his beloved bride are joyfully united together in celebration forever. And when the time comes, it will be beautiful and it will be right. And then the real message perhaps from this gospel is about staying alert and waiting with intent and being prepared for whatever comes along in our lives. And it's a good thing that we don't know perhaps what's going to happen tomorrow. Otherwise, we'd be crazy in our mind, perhaps. We'd always be in a panic. But we have to be ready to open ourselves to God's love, trusting that God will continue to love us and love this world and will continue to save and redeem and love and grace through Jesus Christ who comes to us. And what we can trust also, as Paul says in the reading from 1 Thessalonians, that we will be with the Lord forever. For this and for us and for all of creation, it is good news indeed. And then we'll never run out of oil or the light of Christ. And I'm not sure about your habit of sharing the new creed, but the message from the new creed says, in life, in death, and in life beyond death, we are not alone. We can be faithful in waiting because there will be light and we will not be abandoned. Are you spiritually awake this day for life? Are we ready to see the beauty of that first major snowfall? Are you ready for what happens in this community this afternoon or in your own personal lives? Let your mind and heart be peaceful and grateful and life-giving as you share the kingdom of God with all whom you will encounter after for coffee or as you share as you shared in the passing of the peace. We are the body of Christ. Let us live in the presence of God in this time 
and place. And may it be so. And we sing 948 Voices United, our invitation to prayer. Words are printed in your bulletin. <clears throat> Loving God, as we gather in prayer, shape us in the image of our prayer. Gentle God, God of healing, of new life, you made all that is, all that has been, and all that will be. We pray this day for all in our communities and our world in which so much seems right, the beauty of creation, the warmth of a sun, even though the days have become chilly. The love of family and friends. The sound of the children who perhaps I thought were going to be here on their first day of Sunday school. But the sound of children in our lives. The gift of music, a world of wonder, possibility, and so much more. This week, and in particular yesterday, has been one of memories of remembrance as we give thanks for the veterans of our communities, of our very lives, who walked into a life unknown to be a soldier or a nurse, to work in the factories in this town that supported wartime. These folks were not alone. God was with them in the midst of their lives. And we think of 100 years of Passchendaele, 100 years of a four-day war at Vimy Ridge, and 99 years since the First World War. Thank you for your service and for those who continue to serve this country we call home. We pray this day for our community and our world in which so much seems wrong violence and poverty in the midst of plenty, hatred and pain, suffering, disease and sorrow, loneliness, heartache, and so much more. We pray for those in war-torn countries, for those who are choosing to leave their country for a new life of possibilities in this country that we call Canada. Shall we love our neighbors as ourselves? We pray for those who come with hope that their dreams for a better, safer community may be fulfilled. We pray for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one whose love will always remain in your heart. We pray for this congregation of Trinity St. Stephen's United Church that you may feel alive with passion and hope as you live the work and fun of this church. For all those who serve on the governance model that you are working with, still trying to figure that out at times, perhaps. And for all those who serve through 110 years of church life. Thank you. We pray for your search team chosen by you, Jean, Karen, Kathy, Bonnie, Margaret, Bruce, and Mark. Be open to the spirit as this process continues. Be patient, be surprised, 
be awake to new life. And may the light of God burn brightly in our ordinary lives as we continue to discover Jesus Christ who is accepting, loving, healing, a Jesus who questions, a Jesus who weeps, and a Jesus who loves us unconditionally as we pray together your prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And let us sing together number 299, Teach Me God to Wonder, which is a reflection of Psalm 78. We go out of our church uplifted by song, words, prayers, and fellowship. Let us go into the week to lift the spirits of all those we meet through your grace that we have come to know in our gathering here today. <laughs> 